What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Alien, and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've got an episode of Chicago Bulls Weekly to bring to you guys where we discuss the previous week for the Chicago Bulls, which has just come to an end, and we talk about the future week for the Chicago Bulls where we might have faced, or we will be facing, our toughest challenge this upcoming week, and of course next week as well. It's going to be one hell of a ride for the Chicago Bulls and the journey starts it started against the Cavs but it's going to continue in the next game against the Cavs as well before we get started please like and subscribe to the Bulls show turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls overall previous week and upcoming week as well as the I guess individual awards today and thanks to a comment that actually happened in the last Bulls weekly I have decided to add a new uh, award for I guess guess this Bulls weekly category which I think personally is probably the hardest award to give every single week but it was recommended and I feel like it is a great idea so thank you to the person that did bring that comment in and uh, it was a very good idea so let's get started on the previous week for the Chicago Bulls we had four games to look forward to and we overall went two and two in those games let's start off with that Rockets game that Rockets game felt like it was a long time ago but it was actually this week ladies and gentlemen and we lost this game 118 to 133 uh, a game where pretty much everybody said we took advantage of the Rockets but realistically the Rockets just played much better basketball they played much better defensively they beat us out in transition the Bulls obviously sucked defensively um, um, and yeah, it was just a really bad game overall. So yeah, well look, at the end of the day, there's no excuses to lose to the Houston Rockets. We had a couple days off. At that point, they had the worst record in the league. And um, we were on a hot streak. And we gave that one away. We blew that performance. And the Rockets have had some very good wins over the course of their season. And the Bulls have been one of them now. But it's still no excuse to really show up the way that you did in the last daisical fashion that you did against the Houston Rockets. But they responded in very good fashion as they versed the Milwaukee Bucks for the second time this season. And we won this game 119 to 113. Our first overtime performance for the Chicago Bulls resulted in a very good win overall. Very, very happy with that uh, game, ladies and gentlemen. Phenomenal stuff by the Bulls. Again, the heart that they showed in that game as well was truly inspiring. And and it was a game we didn't expect to win. Again, two minutes in that, into that fourth quarter with two minutes left, the game looked over. And they fought. And they fought. And they fought. And had all the right things go their way as well. A little bit of luck in this league can go a long way. And we got a little bit of luck in our game as well. But we deserved that win for not giving up when a lot of people and a lot of teams would have given up in that situation. No lead is safe in the NBA. And I guess it's just shown, even in two minutes, you can come back in a game. The overtime performance was phenomenal as well. We did everything right. Giannis maybe had, I think, two shots in overtime. But outside of that, the Bulls pretty much knocked down every single shot so congratulations to the Bulls on a very very good victory and then we responded with a big victory against the Detroit Pistons where we won this game 132 to 118 Zach Levine went absolutely crazy in this game playmaking phenomenal assists phenomenal scoring three level scoring phenomenal um just absolutely superb game and I, I said it at the time and I stand by it that was one of Zach Levine's best games of his career I'm not saying it's number one even though recently biased I probably think it is number one uh, but it's up there it's one of his best games of his career he's had multiple 40 point games again from his entire lifespan as a Chicago Bulls player he's had amazing games he's had 40 point game he even had a 50 point game i would arguably say that game against the detroit pistons was much better than his 50 point game one could because we won and two it was just magnificently magnificently it was just significantly well-rounded it was beautiful uh, a game in every sense of the word it was it was magic by zach levine zach levine provided some magic against the pistons one which unfortunately he could not replicate against the cleveland cavaliers as we lost this game 103 to 102 another shot that went to the final get uh, uh Went to the buzzer, ladies and gentlemen, essentially. It went to the last shot of the game. DeMar DeRozan, I think, again, it's a very bad shot by DeMar. I think we could have got a lot better than that. But 
again, uh, you have to take what you're given. He got he he went to one side. It, he went basically double teamed it by the end of it as well. He took a bad shot and it didn't fall. If it falls, great. The De Rose is the guy I trust with the final shot of the game every single time. But it was a bad shot and we can't really dispute that, ladies and gentlemen. It was we could have got a better shot overall. Of course, the Bulls needed to make some of their free throws, uh, second chance opportunities. Again, if Andre Drummond got a couple more rebounds, this game could have been a different story. It was that close, ladies and gentlemen. That's really how the game went overall we lost the 50 50 battles we lost our, i guess the effort plays in this game and that's why cleveland won overall with that being said let's talk about the awards two and two this week we've got the must improve of the week the six man of the week the player of the week and now the defensive player of the week as well we're talking about defense now ladies and gentlemen and there's a lot to get through with these awards starting off with the must improve of the week this is an extremely, it's always very, very hard to give the must improve of the week because there are so many guys that play really well one game and then disappear in the next. And I feel like it's the exact same this week. Kobe White had a great game against the Rockets and had a solid game against Cleveland. But I did think against the Pistons, obviously he missed, I think he missed the game or he, he ended up only playing six minutes in the game. He had a bad game in one of those times out and he had a bad game. I think in the next game after that. So again, two good performances, two performances that were a bit, I, I guess you could say meh in many ways. Uh, Again, you could say the same thing about Javonte Green, who recently returned. Andre Drummond had a bad night. Um, I think recency bias-wise, you probably would give it to Andre Drummond. But look at Andre Drummond's stats and his performances and just his overall style of play in the games before that. It's been, for, it's been very, very good. Uh, I think some of the big three could be in the conversation for this. I think Vucevic is definitely in the must improve category uh, overall. I think he's just had a very okay week. He's been very good defensively. We'll get to that a little bit later. But offensively, I just think sometimes it goes away with what works. Um, Patrick Williams is another guy that I could put into this just for the sake of the fact that he's not always been aggressive, but he's made the shots that he's supposed to make. Very, very hard award to give, honestly. I think in a situation like this, you have to look at the losses of, of the games. We lost to the Cavs. And we lost to the uh, Houston Rockets. And I think the game against the Rockets was very, very poor from Nikola Vucevic. And that's why I'm going to pick him as the must improve of the week. It might be one game. I think there have been other times where he struggled as well. And he's had some good games as well. Don't get me wrong. He, again, the game against the Pistons, he did great. He, he was he was great. He got three blocks. He was doing everything well, rebounding and scoring. He had a great game against the Bucks as well. But again, in a must improve situation, you have to turn to the losses. Otherwise, you're never ever going to pick a must improve. And I would pick Nikola Vucevic. Uh, and I just wanted to see, I guess, more consistency on that defensive end. And to scoring end as well let's not forget in that houston game he only had 10 points that game which is not acceptable for a player of his caliber and a big three player and i understand the fact is in that game he didn't get the ball at all really in that game so how could you score if you don't get the ball but there were also some very very good chances that he missed as well so i would select him as my must improve and obviously his defensive work in that game i didn't necessarily like either i think everybody's defensive uh, display against the houston rockers wasn't necessarily great then we turn into the sixth man of the week and this one is just as hard to give because, as I mentioned before, so many inconsistent guys had good games. Again, Kobe, another one I could put in this conversation, um, had very good games against the Rockets. He had a good game at this time out against the Cavs. I thought he was decent in one of the other games as well, and then one of the games he got hurt. So maybe Kobe White's in the conversation. Uh, Alex Caruso returned recently. I think he's just returned too soon for me to give it to him. If he played all four games this week, I would probably consider him as part of that conversation. Um, same with J Javonte Green. For me, I'm going to give it to Andre Drummond. Yes, you might say Andre Drummond had a bad game against the Cavs. That game was very, very bad from Andre Drummond. 13 minutes and only two points and one rebound. We know we could see better. But he had a great game against the Pistons. He had a great game against the Bucks as well. I thought I thought both of those, Vucevic and uh, Andre Drummond, if they played together, it would have been a monster pairing against the Milwaukee Bucks. But they both got double-digit rebounds and very, very effective. And yeah, I just thought overall he was very, very solid this week. And he was the only one, I think, that actually played all four of the games this week. So he would be my sixth man of the week. Then we turn into Defensive Player of the Week. And again, very, very hard to give. What I will say is, I don't necessarily think our guards actually deserve the Sixth Man of the Week. Again, I know I might contradict myself a little bit here, but hear me out. 
the Houston Rockets game, both of their guards scored over 25 points, and that was their big component of the game. Cleveland, Karis LeVert, Donovan uh, Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell didn't have a great game, to be fair, but their guards, I think, made the biggest impact alongside of Kevin Love and, and Jerry Osman. So their forwards and, and whatnot, I think they made the biggest difference. Um, I think, obviously, with Milwaukee, it was Giannis and Giannis alone, really. So that's really hard to give. But again, I think there were two games here where I thought our guards could play a little bit better defensively. Alex Crusoe just came back. I can't give it to him. I don't think it's fair when he's only really played half the time. Uh, I, again, I, I won't necessarily give it to Io. I think Io is a very good defender, but I don't think I can give it to him this week. Uh, he had he had a couple of struggling games with the one against the Pistons with, with Ivy and obviously the Houston Rockets game. Um, Zach, I thought Zach's defense was solid, but again, I, I, if I can't give it to Io, I can't really give it to Zach. I thought Zach's defense in the Rockets game was okay. I thought the defense today was okay against the Cavs. I thought his defense against the Bucks was good. So that's three out of the four games right there. The Pistons, amazing as well. You know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to give it to Zach Levine. Uh, Judge me all you like, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I'm bouncing back and forth in my own mind. It's very, very hard to give these types of awards. But Zach Levine's defense is often criticized. And he's had very good defense in most of these games. Um, again, I think the Rockets game is probably the exception. I don't think anyone played well against the Rockets when they're scoring 130 points on you. Simple as that. But again... I don't think he played badly on the defensive uh, side today. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Maybe I'm wrong in that instance. The Pistons was fantastic. I won't. There's no disputing that. He was great defensively against the Pistons. And I thought he was very good against the Bucks defensively as well. Uh, so, yeah, his help defense was solid. Um... Yeah, I think Zach Levine. That's the guy I'm going to go with. But my player of the week is not Zach Levine. And hear me out. He had a great game against the Pistons, but DeMar DeRozan was much more consistent throughout the week. He had a great game against the Rockets. He had a great game against the Bucks. He played solid against the Pistons as well. And he obviously chipped in with 20 points against the uh, the Cavs as well. Even though, granted, no one was really great in that game offensively. So DeMar DeRozan was much more consistent overall. So I, my player of the week will go to DeMar DeRozan. But Zach, very, very good defensive week overall. Again, with more time looking at the defensive stats in many ways, I could probably give you better defensive player of the weeks in the future. This is only the first time introducing this concept to this channel. And again, let me know if you agree or disagree. It might be one of the most, I guess, surprising statements to say Zach Levine is the defensive player of the week for this team. But maybe sometimes you've got to give credit where it's due. For a guy that's often considered one-dimensional, he had a great defensive week in my eyes at least. Uh, and maybe the stats could back that up, I'm not too sure. Usually this award will probably go to Alex Caruso. I'm expecting it to go to Alex Caruso most nights, but he just came back very, very harsh uh, on Zach Levine. And for every other player that did play great defense, to just give it to Alex Caruso straight up, even though the two games that he played was amazing on the defensive end. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's move into the upcoming week for the Chicago Bulls. We've got a couple of games to look forward to. I believe we have uh, four games to look forward to. Another back-to-back -to, -back to talk about as well. The first game is going to be against the Cleveland Cavaliers away from home. We just versed them consecutive uh, games, basically, for the Bulls and the Cavs. The Bulls should be able to feel confident coming into this game. Again, we versed the Cavs recently. Yes, we played a bad game. Has played a bad game, but it's very hard to beat a com an opponent uh, on a consecutive basis like that. So if the Bulls come out and lose this game, and especially if they play worse in this game, I think most people will be very, very upset with this Bulls team. The next game is against the Brooklyn Nets at home. Uh, we've beaten the Brooklyn Nets once before, but let's be honest, they were absolute shambolic. They were abysmal uh, by the, when the time we, we versed them. Uh, right now, they're on top of the world. They've won a couple of games in a row. They won, I think, 10 games in a row. Last time I checked, I don't think they've lost a game yet in that time frame in which I said that comment. And they're just a team that's going to be very frightening to face. I don't really care uh, what, I guess, situation they're in. Any team with Brooklyn, any team in terms of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and especially when they're playing well, scary, scary team to verse. But then we also got a game against the Philadelphia 76ers away from home. Joel Embiid has still yet to lose a game against Chicago. I'm expecting him to play this game against the Bulls. Can this be the history-making night? Again, I feel like with Philadelphia, 
It's not necessarily based on our record. I don't really care what our record is when we verse Philadelphia. That moment, that moment where we could beat Joel Embiid is going to be, again, it's history making for the Chicago Bulls in many ways. We're waiting for that time. I sincerely hope we can beat Joel Embiid at least once in his career. Honestly, I think he's gotten to that point. He's been in the league for I don't know how long. And the fact that he has not been able to lose to this team... If that's a career thing, if that's something by the end of his career, he could just say, I never ever lost to the Bulls. I mean, how bad would that look on us? So I really want to beat that Philadelphia team. And then obviously we got that back-to-back -back against the Utah Jazz at home, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Larry Markkinen return to Chicago. Many people will be anticipating that game. Utah are a fun team. They play five out a lot. They obviously play very well offensively. So the Bulls are going to have to match that and bring their defensive intensity in this type of game. Utah, when they play well, are very hard to stop. So let's hope they don't play well against the Chicago Bulls team. We have the confidence. We've beaten them once before. Let's see if we could do it again at the United Center. And that's it for Bulls Weekly. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.